Welcome back. We did it. 100,000. I want to give a huge thank you, obviously, to everyone that's supported my channel thus far. I know some people were commenting on my 100K post like, hey, I just found your channel like earlier today. Congrats. And so, I mean, any, any amount of time that you've been around, thanks. For those of you that have been around since Subnautica, whew. But yeah, I started this channel about four years ago, and when I started it, I had pretty much no direction or plan. I was just like, I want to do a channel. And I think at the beginning, I wanted it to be a gaming channel, which is funny, and it's kind of been a joke on this channel that I'm like the worst gaming channel because I don't play games. But at the very beginning, it was just games. It was Subnautica, Destiny, Titanfall 2, Minecraft, other underwater horror games, Alien Isolation. I could not handle that game. But yeah, it was pretty much exclusively a gaming channel. And then one fateful day, I was like, you know what? I'm tired of doing gaming videos. And so many people have killed their channel doing that exact thing. They do one type of content and they think, I want to just do this other, very different thing. And then their viewers are like, that's cool. We support you, but we're also not going to watch this other thing because that's not what we're here for. I guess it's safe to say, didn't kill my channel. I do gaming videos like twice a year now. <laughs> so I feel like I got to give a big thank you to everyone that stayed with me through a, a huge change of content. Maybe you found me after the change, but I know a lot of people stuck around. I'll get a comment on a video where I'm watching scary TikToks and someone will be like, I've been watching you since Subnautica. And not only did we go from being a gaming channel to like a Reddit channel, which we do more than just Reddit, of course now at least <laughs> for a little while we didn't but we switched from a exclusively scary water channel to just everything but anyway all this is to say thank you for your support because i've gotten to do something i think a lot of creators don't get to do and that is sort of not think about it too much you know like i feel like a big part of content creation especially now on modern youtube is that you have to like game the algorithm and like look at the trends and just you know clickbaity stuff and all that and it's been a long time joke of mine to just title everything exactly what it is as like a sort of like reverse clickbait where it's like man watches scary tiktoks and gets scared and then you click on the video and then it's me watching scary tiktoks and i get scared and it's like oh and I've been doing that since the beginning of this channel, and I feel like I like to think it's a new trend. People are tired of clickbait. Just title your video exactly what it is and see what happens. And if the title isn't good when titling it exactly what it is, then make a better video, you know? Anyway, thanks for supporting my journey. And my journey's been going on a long time. A lot longer than any of you would probably guess. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna look at old videos of mine. We're gonna start back in 2006 and work our way up to now. Now, YouTube didn't exist prior to 2004, I believe. So I was putting videos on the platform within the first two years of it existing. So people are always talking about who the OG YouTubers are. It's me. <laughs> oh, you didn't watch my 12 year old self's channel when I posted Microsoft Paint animations that were horrible? Well, you're lost. But I love this platform. I loved making videos before YouTube existed and YouTube was like my dream website. 2006 is when I got my beginning. So I, I did animations. And I use the word animation very lightly because they're more like slideshows. So I've broken down my YouTube journey from 2006 up to 2023, which is now, look at the cap, oh my gosh, 2023. Jeez, where'd the time go? That's crazy, 2023? Huh? That can't be right. Yep. I'm almost 30. I think I had five or six channels over the course of this, and some of them are gonna blow your mind. Now, it's important to note that I cherry-picked because I had to. I did a rough count of all my channel's videos total, and I have close to a thousand videos, not including this channel. This is very much just scratching the surface, and you'll thank me that we're only watching 15 and not a thousand because, well, you'll see why. My channel was called Spadowski. James Bond, this is gonna be sick, even though I'd never seen James Bond as a 12 year old. No freaking way.
dude. So James Bond enters the scene, shoots the light bulb out, which is something I'd seen from the Splinter Cell games. You shoot the light bulb out so the guards can't see you. And then he shoots their heads and they fly up off screen and blow up, which is something I was copying from, uh, I think it's called the Demented cartoon. It was popular at this time. So no original ideas. I was 12, but give myself a little bit of slack, but I was very much a copier. Uh oh. Grenade, very nice. <laughs> nice, nice. Walk through the explosion. Here we go. So for whatever reason, I felt the need to animate each bullet. There wasn't a lot of like making my job easier in this. It's like just make like tracers, you know? You don't gotta draw a snake of bullets. But this scene's pretty sick. Chops a guy's face in half with a throwing star. Look at this quality, dude. Bro. Coming in for landing. Oh! James. Okay, that was also copying the Demented cartoon. Anyway, there's 47 seconds left, but guess what happens during that time? Nothing. There was 48 seconds of black screen at the end so that the song could finish. <laughs> Pretty cool. Anyway, that's how I started out. That was the first video I ever uploaded. Um, I did make a James Bond 2, but before we watch that, I want to show uh, how I also did clay animation. Spider monster stabs him with a toothpick. Oh, he's fine. Rips your arms off. I very vaguely remember making this and thinking it was going to be a lot longer than 10 seconds, but that's the thing about animation, baby. You spend four hours making it and it comes out to 10 seconds long. 12 year old me was pretty proud and I think that kicked off a journey. There's more claymation coming. So keep that in mind. I also uploaded, I think I had a separate channel for this. I don't know what that channel would have been, but I found this video. And I gotta mute the music here, but this is so classic, dude. Unregistered Hypercam 2. Old RuneScape footage from 2006 of me just scraping by fighting the King Black Dragon with a DDS. So sick. <laughs> Sorry, that was just, a, that's just a throwback to 2006. I did do one more James Bond video that I think it's a little bit better. Um, I think my animation got slightly better, like this scene. So, like, you know, there's actually some stuff happening. A little hard to see what's happening, but there's also this funny part where he drives his car and the car hits a guy on the road and then he uses the windshield wipers. <laughs> Pretty funny. Okay, 2007. I realize I gotta move kind of quick. I probably picked out too many videos. There's no way we're gonna go through all of them because I want to watch them all enough so that you can get them without skipping around too much, but I'm probably gonna have to skip around. I was mostly making animations like for my friends. Like I would kind of like insert ourselves into them, like where we all kind of had characters in these videos I made. And then I was making videos that were like sketches almost as in we came up with one idea and then just filmed for like 20 minutes and i tried to cut it into like a cohesive video this is me right here So we kill him by pushing him down the stairs on a sled. And then I say, well, that's a bummer. <laughs> and then it's three minutes of us playing hide and go seek with the guy that died at the beginning, uh, mind you. He's right there. Uh, so I don't, continuity, a little bit, a little bit sketchy. Now, when I couldn't make videos with friends, I would always try to make videos by myself. You know, the insatiable desire to be a solo act so no one can slow you down. Welcome to the weather channel, where the weather is... channel. It's not my real Let's hair, Let's go it's see what the weather is like today. I like the weather. Let's check it out. 
It's dark. See you next week. Pretty funny. I don't really know what commentary to make for some of these. I feel like they're sort of self-explanatory. It's just like me as a kid trying to be funny. But like I said, there was more animations. I think that was my greatest export because it actually took a lot of effort. So I made a video like a superhero world about a guy named Shuriken Man. And uh, it was like a superhero universe. Um, this is the origin story of Fireman, who is his arch nemesis. Yeah, he fell into a volcano. And then he came out with a cape and red hair. There's our guy. That's my guy. That's Stricken Man right there. Jeez Louise. This fire guy seems like a bad dude. Oh. Our hero. Oh my gosh. Man, animating this was such a nightmare. I don't know why I chose this of all things. Hundreds of frames of the fire moving. And then I got lazy for this one. It's like, screw that. We're doing 15 frames for this one. Dude. <laughs> There's so many better ways to do this. Sick. And skipping ahead a bit, he does win in the end, just so that you guys can sleep tonight. He kicks him off of a building, and then he falls and gets ran over by a car that I did not draw, but it ends with the cliffhanger, you see. Because this blonde guy goes into this high voltage area covered with bones and uh, gets electrocuted and then becomes an electric man so yeah there was gonna be a part two I noticed a common thing with all of these animations that was always to be continued and I never continued them it was every video was a cliffhanger ending I had a three-part series for my friends where every character like represented someone and then we would all kind of fight, and it was sort of like Game of Thrones for my friends group, you know, where it was like, oh no, so-and-so got their head blown up in this one, that's crazy. Or like, so-and-so backstabbed, so-and-so, you know, it was kind of, it was kind of fun, it was like the episode of the week. I don't remember how much they thought it was cool, it might have just been me that thought it was cool, but, I mean, I don't know, kind of cool. Alright, 2008, this is the era I call actual content. This is just like the, uh, claymation era, where I think some of them were actually okay. Heck yeah, with effects. Lego guns. Let's go. Oh my gosh, that's a big, that's a big drop. What are our heroes gonna do? Oh, jump. <laughs> they can jump. Let's go, let's go. Rocket. Nice. This one's funny because I think at some point, I think it's the next one, I throw a grenade. I have one of them throw a grenade, but I didn't want to remake all that, so I just had no one die. Yeah. The grenade goes off in the middle of them, and, <laughs> and then they still have a shootout. I did not want to make a whole new scene to do it all again. Dang. Turns on the fan. Our hero pushes that guy in the fan. Oh, gruesome. Dang, and he shoots us. He shoots the camera and it breaks. The bullet holes on everything. I used a toothpick each time, but I feel like that gives a nice effect, you know? But you can see this shot where like, uh, the... You know, it's like he's right in front of the camera. I was like thinking, I was planning things out a little better, I think. Or rather, I was just starting to plan. But like, yeah, I had like the camera set up in a spot that made sense. To where for the most part, you can see what's happening. It's still a little hard to discern at times. Like this last scene. It's like with the background. You really can't tell what's going on. But yeah, he falls. Yeah, and then he pushes the guy in the fan. <laughs> Pretty gruesome. Um, and then this one, I feel like I'm actually proud of this one. I think this one's actually kind of good. 
I feel like I could have done a lot of good by doubling how many frames I was doing to make it less slideshowy, you know, do it a little, a little smoother. But I think that that would have taken so much time, I would have given up. So the trade-off was that I actually finished making these. Throwing star. Uh-oh. Double gun. Let's go. This guy's a champ. There we go. I'm actually using the grenades for kills. Look at that camera angle. Shooting all their arms off. Oof. It should be mentioned that my character model design was pretty much a direct ripoff of Knox Corners claymations. I don't know if you watched those way back in the day, but like these, these were popular at the time. And I basically was just like, hey, that makes sense. That's what my characters look like now. <laughs> so. Credit where credit is due. I was still copying stuff. Nice. Grenade. Dude, this guy is unstoppable, bro. Oh. Oh, no. Backflip over a bullet. Holy smokes. Oh. He's hit. Oh, no. He's in jail or something. I like how just for the sake of him getting to shoot all the bad guys, every bad guy, like, does not even try to stop him. They just stand there until he kills them. Like, everyone hangs out there, all four of them with guns, until he shoots the explosive barrel. <laughs> like, sick. I guess I would have been 14, so, I mean, you know, for, for a 14 year old, it's fine. But I loved making these. I would spend the whole day on these. But yeah, I feel like this was the first type of content that really clicked for me, where I was like, people would actually like this. And then ironically, I stopped making claymation after this. There might be one more, but I'm not sure. Um, during the same era, I was making sketches with my friends still. We're not gonna watch this whole thing. But I had a five part series called Serial Killer, which was like my magnum opus, mwah. It was horrible. So the story was, there was a cereal box advertising that you could get a free turbo car in every box. And um, he bought 12 boxes and didn't get a turbo car. So we agreed to destroy cereal. Cereal's evil. Yeah, let's destroy them. This is me right here, in case you're wondering. Um, and then we gear up, go out to the garage, which is where we filmed everything, and then we hear a sound. This is scary, okay? I'm just gonna like say oh, oh, gosh. Oh. And then we get attacked by cereal boxes that are very much alive and very much trying to kill us. It's silly, but we had so much fun making this. I think all the videos I did with friends, it was just so we had something to do. It was like the most fun thing to do. It was like we would hang out just to film some silly video idea, and then I would edit it or whatever, and then we, next time we hung out, we'd watch it together. And it was just like this fun, super fun. So anyway, <laughs> this, this series sort of had a story. Uh, it was mostly just 20 minutes of us getting attacked by boxes being thrown from off screen and every creative way we could have conflict with these boxes. And there was a pretty violent death. And we gave our friend a proper funeral. Actually, wait, no, we put him in the back of a trunk? <laughs> I don't remember this. Oh, I guess we're taking him to go get a proper burial. And then the best part of the whole series. The big battle at the end. The big, uh... The big CGI battle at the end. And then our friend comes back from the dead and kills him because his mom showed up and had to take him home. So we had to swap characters. So the dead guy had to come back for the final battle. And this is probably copyright music, but hopefully it's not. But the Narnia theme is playing right now because that movie had just come out. <laughs> and uh, yeah, pretty epic battle scene. But that javelin throw, magnificent. Look at this. Man, so sick. But yeah, and then we, we have to retreat. And, uh, it's just like the movie. 
That whole thing happened in the closet. That whole thing happened in serial Narnia. Pretty crazy, twist ending. But that was probably the biggest thing we did because it was like a five part series and like everyone was a part of it. So like that was cool, I don't know. So making videos with my friends um, and then we moved, my family moved states away. This is 2009, I call this era new beginnings, but also I probably should have stopped. <laughs> um, I cranked out content in this time because it was kind of all I had to do. I didn't really have any friends. So I was just making videos by myself. And so I know you've been asking for it. And here it is. Stop motion is back, baby. I made this song too, and you could probably tell. <laughs> Can we appreciate just how 2009 this looks though? I'm wearing black jean shorts that go way past my knees. I'm wearing some sort of skate shirt, probably a Hurley or something. I've got a duct tape top hat on. I've got black shoes, I think they're Vans maybe, with mismatching neon shoelaces. This is the most 16 year old in the early 2000s picture ever. And I'm doing stop motion, which honestly was kind of just a big trend at that point, too. No way. How's he doing that? So cool. You can see I'm wearing like 10 bracelets at the end there. Pretty sick. And then 24 seconds of black screen. I also did this one. There is something funny about driving around in a chair, right? <laughs> oh, what? When I came back, I was a kid. Wait, someone stole my chair. Little guy. Oh, it was my cat. It's my little brother. It was in the chair at the end, and then I'm like, hey, get out of there. But then it's my cat. Oh, that's so sweet. There's too many, dude. I've, I'm already overwhelmed. We're, we gotta move faster. There's too much. I'm just gonna show you snippets. But then I did videos where I would just talk to the camera and try to be funny. These gummy bears look like lemurs. They do not look like bears. Seriously. They taste like bears though, so I'm not gonna complain. Pretty funny, Greg. Pretty funny stuff. Filming yourself in the closet. This next one's pretty sick. There's my intro. So sick. <laughs> Let's go, look at these effects. There's me and my huge jean shorts again. Dang, I dodged that. Ooh. Just know I, I I had to screen grab every frame of this video. And then I had to draw onto every frame one at a time. So, it took a long time to make this video. I remember working on this for weeks. And honestly, I'm, I'm happy I still have access to it because it's, I don't know, it's kind of cool. <laughs> this tiny little one hand force field. I'm cracked at these magic battles. Oh, you hit me, but. I have absorbed your power. Dang. He is really not doing very well. Oh, the classic twist. He uses a gun at the end. Comedy. But I did make one really serious video, which is seven minutes long, we're not gonna watch it, but I did do this one, where I like change the colors. So I could make everything like purple. So it looked like I was on an alien world. And I did a dramatic voiceover like I was stranded here. I've seen strange footsteps and tracks in the ground. Is that b -b 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 blood? I feel like I'm being followed. 
And then for half a second I animated aliens. Jeez, dude. Jeez, dude. Is it to be continued? Yeah. Naturally, to be continued. But yeah, I feel like I put a lot of effort in. I just didn't have a lot of great tools. I think I filmed all that with an iPod Touch, um, which was, you know, 720p, at the, which was good at the time. That was HD. And then the next era, 2011 to 2012, is the duct tape era. This is actually leading up to me taking a break. So I've talked about this before, but at some point in time, I started making, oh yeah, in my diary video, I tell you why I got into it. I was making these duct tape wallets, and then I was selling them online, and then I had a bunch of them. And I was trying to get more people to buy them, so I made a video about them on my channel, showing off all the ones that I had, and then I had a link to like an eBay store. So I ended up selling, I think, all of these. And then the video did really well. And so I was like, people like this duct tape stuff. It was hot at this point in time. This is 2011. Then I made a duct tape animation. Pretty cool. It was just an excuse to show off all the stuff that I made. So I had a whole other channel I created called Crazy Duct Tape Guy, and it's actually still out there, although I think I've privated most of the videos by this point. I still have access to it. I think it has just under 2,000 subscribers. I did that for a while. This video, where I show how to make a duct tape purse, or like a duct tape bag, got like 200,000 views or something like that, so I was kind of popping off with these tutorials. And then I kind of got tired of doing that pretty quickly too. And so I just stopped doing YouTube for I think three years. And then I didn't pick it back up again until 2015. And I didn't really pick it back up again in any big way. I just created like a gaming channel and I was posting Destiny 1 like gaming montages where I like tried to match the gameplay up with the uh, music and stuff like classic era. Dang, he's good. Dang. So yeah, it just became like your standard gaming channel. Nothing special, I had five subscribers. <laughs> I had no success posting these Destiny videos. So then when Rise of the Tomb Raider came out, I just played it through in like a no commentary let's play the entire game. And then I did like a couple more Destiny videos and then I just stopped posting on this channel. I was like, I, I can't, there's too many gaming channels. And I I was self-aware enough at this point to know that I wasn't offering anything super amazing that you couldn't find elsewhere. <laughs> so then I kind of like took a break again for some time. And this is where things get really interesting because for the first time in all this time in 2016, I actually had some success during this time 2016 and honestly the years leading up to that as well there was a growing community called the whisper community which then became what is now asmr and um i really liked these videos they were good to like chill out to and i know people have different thoughts about it and whatever i think it's become sort of cringe now in a lot of ways people have made it very sus but there's a lot of good where it's just you're just there to like chill out. It was popular and I liked watching it and I was like, why don't I try making this? And I had just moved out of my parents' house into my own place. And finally I could, without any judgment, film videos of myself whispering. <laughs> I didn't want to explain that to my family at all. And so I started a channel called Captain ASMR. My first video ever is here. And yes, I'm going to be whispering in all these. And I wasn't very good at it, especially at first. But the video did all right, and I was like, this could be something. And so, look at this, all right? 473 videos. If you are watching this and you didn't know about this channel, boom. Although I think I have it linked on my Greg Bro Dude Man channel, so like, still, I feel like this is gonna blow someone's mind. <laughs> but the first probably 20 or so videos were just pretty whatever. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just like, if I'm whispering, it's ASMR. And then Fortnite was brand new. It was brand new, and everyone like at my job was playing it. Like everyone was playing it, like of all ages. So I made a video sort of outlining some places to land, like where my favorite spots to land were. 
on the OG map, by the way. Way, this is like season two or season three or something. And it kind of popped off. So I was like, this is sick. So then I did some normal videos again. And then I was like, let's do Fortnite again. And then that did well. You can see the difference in views here. Fortnite again, 78K. I basically became a Fortnite ASMR channel. So there are probably two things you never thought you'd hear me say that I used to do where I was a, an ASMR Fortnite channel, but it's true. But yeah, I did this for six years and it was mostly Fortnite for the first year. And then I did some other games. I did some Destiny stuff. Titanfall 2, and then I kind of hit a wall where I, same with this channel, where I was like, I don't really want to do as much gaming, you know, like it's, doing gaming videos is not my thing. So I did less and less of those and did more just like straight up ASMR videos, and those never really did very well. People very much were watching me for my gaming stuff, and then I was doing Minecraft for a while, I found a lot of success off that, and then I got tired of doing that. I just got tired of doing stuff. I sort of killed my own channel by just changing it up too much and kind of being a little bit directionless. I stopped enjoying it. And then my views just go down, 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 further and further. Um, I loved the community. I had such so many great viewers and so many great memories that it was really hard to like commit to stopping this channel. And then honorable mention, I feel like this would be weird if I didn't mention this, but this isn't like my part of my journey. This is what I'm doing right now. But about two years ago, I created this channel called Gorg. A lot of people don't know that this is me too, but I do get comments a lot being like, no way, I watched both these channels. I didn't realize it was the same guy because I wanted to keep them really separate. We'll see where that goes. 269K. And uh, yeah, now I just do whatever the heck, man. I just make videos willy nilly. And man, what a journey it's been. I've been doing this for, what did I say earlier? 16, 17 years? 17 years, 2006 which is more than half of my life at this point. So my identity has always sort of been wrapped up in YouTube and I'm pretty happy about that. I've always enjoyed making videos and none of the channels were created with the exception of maybe Gorg. Um, none of them were created to like be this big thing. You know, I just sort of like started making fun videos and was having a good time. And then here we are. And I think sometimes it's hard to not care about the numbers so it's been a constant struggle to not like care too much like just looking at this it's like hey this video did really well and this video didn't so maybe i won't do this again you know but i want to do this again so i probably will but it's definitely something you have to purposely think about the cozy video was my worst performing video in a long time but i really liked doing that video so i'll probably do it again you know because i think that every now and then you had to make videos that you really like doing. For me, I, how many times I've quit channels before? I know now to prioritize just having fun because if you don't, then you just stop and then you have no fun. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for sticking around for however long you've been following me. And uh, yeah, I'm far from done. I have no, no bone in my body that wants to quit this channel in any way, anytime soon. So I've got a lot of videos that I wanna do and uh, content on the horizon. Thanks for supporting me. It means a lot. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching my silly videos with me. <laughs> you don't have to subscribe if you don't want to. I've already got 100k. I don't need any more. <laughs> All right. Bye. Goofball?